importan más los problemas de los demás que los de tu propia familia. Ningún problema es solo de los demás. That was a clip from Fernando Chereba's Forgotten Will Be, which was released under the title Memories of My Father in the UK. Chereba is an award-winning Spanish director, screenwriter and producer. The former film critic has been recognized by his peers with multiple Goyas, a BAFTA, an Oscar, a Silver Bear and more. His latest movie is an adaptation of Oblivion, a memoir written by the son of Colombian public health activist Hector Abad Gomez, who was assassinated in Medellin in 1987. It's a pleasure to have you. Hello. My pleasure. Hello. You gifted the uh, memoir Oblivion to your friends and family several times over the years. What made you want to make a film adaptation of the book? Well, uh, in the beginning, I, I, I never thought of making a film adaptation, but the, um, uh, the producer and the author of the book approached me, and my first reaction was, it's impossible, it's, it's too intimate, too uh, personal. How can you do a movie uh, from that? No, But finally, I, I thought and, 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 and I decided to, I, I would like to make it and, and I'm happy that I changed my mind. But my first uh, impression was it was impossible. I, I loved too much the book. What made you change your mind? I think that I, uh, I thought that uh, this character of this doctor and the story, so beautiful story of the, it's a, it's a love story of a son and his father, uh, should be told. No? Obviously, it's told in the in the book, but uh, with a movie you can uh, uh, touch more people. No? And uh, and also, I thought that it was an opportunity of make a good film and good cinema with from that. Right, Forgotten Will Be is told from the point of view of uh, the son, Hector Jr. There are two time frames, his childhood and his, and his youngish adulthood. You made the very interesting choice of filming the past in colour and the present in, in black and white. Why? I, I, <laughs> the truth is I never took the decision. It's, uh, when you are going to make a movie, you, uh, the movie lives in your head for, for months. No? Uh, before it is, uh, you get it made. So it was like that in my mind. So it, it was my dream was like that. So I decided to follow my instinct and made it, uh, made the film as I dreamed it. Right, so it really does look like the sun is hugging the screen and parts of Forgotten will be. Take a look. Fuiste el primero que se atrevió a hablar de salud pública en este país. De este momento eres imprescindible para el futuro de este país. Por las manos te llevas a la boca todas las bacterias recogidas durante el día. Tú y yo sabemos que si Dios de verdad existe, a él no le va a preocupar si lo adoramos o no. Now, Spanish actor Javier Camara delivers a convincing performance as Dr. Gomez. Camara is also well known for collaborating with your fellow countryman Pedro Almodóvar. Why did you pick Camara and what was it like working with him? Well, working with him is always a joy. And that was one of the most important things for me uh, to have in the movie. Because the movie is about uh, a man who loved life and who had an incredible joy of life. And when you, when I was research, uh, researching for the movie, in all the photographs that exist of him, he's always laughing out loud, you know, with a big open mouth. And uh, this is a thing that even if you are the best actor in the world, you can't fake. It, um, you must have it. And, uh, and Javier, uh, apart from being an incredible actor, he has this um, love of life. All right, film, uh, film lovers might be most familiar with your work with Penelope Cruz in The Girl of Your Dreams, The Queen of Spain, and the Oscar-winning film Belle Epoque. They're comedies, satires with um, imperfect but lovable characters. This time you made a hero who's admirable from the beginning to the end, through and through. Why is this? Well, for me, it's not a hero. I think uh, we, uh, we use too much the, the, the word hero today. I think he's better than that. We don't need heroes. We need real human beings in the, in the world we live. We spend too much time talking about heroes and superheroes. We need a hero every week. One week is the 
the firemen, another week the doctors, another week uh, whatever. I think uh, we need that uh, people act as real humans and think about r the real problems of the human race and, and, and of the planet and uh, things like that. And I, what is great about uh, Dr. Hector Abad Gomez is that he was a man with uh, big letters. Your film is above all a heartwarming homage from a son to his father, but the backdrop is political. Hector Senior was a progressive university professor and a public health activist, as you mentioned. He was killed by right-wing paramilitaries for daring to criticize the political status quo. Now, for almost two years, anti-government protesters have been marching in the streets of Colombia. Dozens were killed at the hands of the police. What parallels, if any, could you draw from the situation when Gomez was killed to the situation now? Yeah, these days I've been in France uh, doing avant premieres of the movie in a lot of towns, and there, there is a lot of uh, Colombians living in France. And every day I was approached by some Colombian woman or man to tell me they love the movie, but uh, that the situation is the same. It should change. I think uh, uh, the Colombians have more than enough, and they need a normal country where they can live without this violence and this in, uh, so brutal inequality and sometimes so brutal injustice too. Every week several uh, human rights leaders or indigenous leaders or um, labor leaders are killed. So it's uh, uh, too, too many for what a country can really uh, bear. Now, violence is uh, the topic of a new exhibit by Colombian sculptor Doris Salcedo. Um, her exhibit is open in Bogota, and she's commemorating dead protesters under Ivan Duque's government. It's called Stolen Lives, and uh, in it you see black and white portraits. Let's take a listen to the reasoning behind her project. We cannot fix national problems, but we can ask the country to pause. This bewildering time of catastrophe, death and tragedy has to stop. Have you seen uh, Doris Salcedo's work before? Uh, I've seen uh, things uh, from her in the papers and some on TV, but I'm not uh, so familiar with it. But I think it's, uh, uh, sh she was uh, doing uh, work about people killed and uh, assassinated. There has been some really heavy things in Colombia that why, uh, what they call the, the, the fake positives and uh, people who were killed as uh, if they were uh, uh, guerrilla people and they were not and things like that that uh, from, from an European point of view is unbelievable that something so horrible and, and uh, can exist. You know? So I think uh, uh, her work is, is trying to, to, to stop all this kind of uh, uh, practices, uh, uh, criminal practices. She uses a black and white portrait to reflect a dark period, much like you did in your film. And earlier you also said that the situation uh, is the same now as was before, according to the Colombians you meet here in Paris. Do you see a light at the end of the tunnel? The light is that, the, that when you are there in Colombia and you talk to the people, the young, the old, you realize that they want to, to stop and change, and, and they are the right to it. They are the right to live in a normal place. You know? uh, every time they, uh, uh, when they know I'm a Spanish, they say, oh, Madrid, uh, because they love Madrid, the Colombians, because they speak Spanish in Madrid, and you can walk in the streets at, at four in the morning without uh, feeling danger. You know? so, uh, that's what, what, what life should be for everyone in, in the whole world, no? not only Colombians. No? So they fight to, for having that, just that, a normal life. Forgotten Will Be was one of your biggest films in two decades, and it was, on, it was nominated to the official selection of the 2020 Cannes Film Festival. Unfortunately, that event was cancelled due to the coronavirus. Uh, how else has the pandemic affected your work, and, and how did you get through this complicated period? 
Well, I, I can say in, in a way I was lucky that I finished the movie because, uh, before, just before the pandemic. Now, first, uh, I, I, I finished like in February and the, the Colombian producers sent the, uh, the movie to the committee, uh, uh, admission committee in, in Cannes, and, and then the pandemic uh, started. And uh, I was working in my new movie, which is an animation, my second animation movie. And uh, so the pandemic uh, didn't affect us so much. It affect us in our lives. No? But uh, the work, we, we could uh, keep on working on it. All right. Finally, we always ask our guests what their cultural pick of the moment is. And you picked the 2019 movie, The August Virgin, which was directed by your son, Jonas Chureba. It's now coming out on DVD here in France. In just one sentence, what did you enjoy most about your son's fifth feature film? I, I, uh, the movies of my son, I can feel the love of cinema that he has and the love of life too. And uh, Eva in August, this is, is, a, is a beautiful story. He captures the atmosphere. He, you can touch the air, no? And you, uh, he made you uh, feel what this uh, woman is thinking all the time, no? You are not just listening what she says, but you are watching what she thinks. That's uh, really uh, impressed me. All right, we'll leave you with a clip of that in just a second. Your film, Forgotten Will Be, is out in French cinema. Thank you, Fernando Jureba, for coming to the show. And thank you thank for you. watching. Remember our website, Twitter and Instagram. There's more news coming up after this.